Step one is you get yourself a worm bin. Well, I guess that makes sense. You need a place to keep them. The good news, Sue, is worm bins are pretty easy to get. Complete worm composting kits are available, usually at discounted prices, during workshops at one of our smart gardening learning centers that are located throughout LA County. Although our kits come with a three tray bin, we recommend beginners start with one tray just till they get to learn the process a little better. Along with the bin, you'll be getting bedding and step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the bin. Another option is to house your worms in plastic or wooden bins that you can either make or supply yourself. The second step is to add shredded newspaper or coconut fiber to the bin. And don't forget the most important ingredient, the worms themselves. Yes, anywhere from half a pound to a pound will do nicely. Are there any particular kinds of worms that we should use? The worm most often used for composting is Icena fetida, the red wiggler or red worm. You may get the worms at a smart gardening workshop or from a worm farmer to make sure you get the right species. I've read that these worms survive and thrive on just about any kind of vegetable scrap. They eat large amounts of food, that they tolerate changes pretty well, and they reproduce quickly to fill up the bin. Which brings us to step three. Step three is to make sure you feed your worms regularly. Bury the food under existing compost or shredded newspaper. This keeps critters out and helps regulate moisture and temperature. So as we said earlier, the worms do their best when fed a steady diet of fruit and vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, tea bags, crushed eggshells, even stale bread. I guess that's a pretty diverse diet. So should you immediately feed the worms large amounts of food? It's a good idea to start out with only a few small food items. A banana peel or an apple core might be all they need for the first few days, especially since they will also be eating their bedding. Gradually add more food. If food is rancid or moldy, you're feeding too much and need to slow down until they reproduce more and catch up. Are there certain foods that worms shouldn't eat? Food don'ts include things like moldy food, meat and dairy items, citrus rinds, oil, fats and grease, and pet droppings. Step four. Your worm bin should be kept cool, so make it a point to keep it out of direct sunlight. Unless you like fried worms. Ew. Step five, Sue. Make sure the bedding is kept moist, but not wet. The contents of the bin should be about as damp as a wrung out sponge. So worms really like a damp environment, but like a lot of plants, they don't respond well if they get overwatered. Step six. If your compost bin starts to give off a vinegary smell, it could be an indication the pH level is too low. A low pH indicates there is too much acid. So to eliminate the unpleasant smell and balance out the pH, just sprinkle crushed eggshells, finely ground limestone, or bone meal into the bin. Or you could bury the food scraps deeper into the compost. Is there anything that we shouldn't use to eliminate odor? Well, under no circumstances should you use chemicals. That could be fatal to the worms. Okay, so save the worms. Any other trouble areas we need to be aware of? Odors could be caused by too much moisture in the bin. To fix that, add some more dry shredded newspaper. Another problem could be rancid food, which might mean there aren't enough worms to do the job. So, we either add more worms, slow down the rate of feeding, or remove rancid, uneaten food, right? Exactly. Another cause of odor might be drainage in the bottom of the tray. Just be sure to drain the bin regularly. What do you do if the worm bin gets too hot? Chances are it's in an area of direct sunlight, which could cause quicker moisture evaporation. Just move the bin to a shadier area out of the sun. You can also drop in a few ice cubes, since heat tends to dry out the bin. Sometimes the bin draws insects that we don't want buzzing around. Most likely they're fruit flies, also known as vinegar flies. The best solution to keep them away from the compost is to add more damp shredded newspaper and bury the food in it. What about the insects that show up inside the bin? I believe you're referring to the tiny white potworms and red mites that swarm all over the food scraps. 
Well, actually, they help the worms in the decomposition process. Earthworms don't do the work alone. There are billions of living creatures in the bin, some of them visible, some microscopic. So potworms, mites, and sow bugs are all good for the bin. Step seven, harvest and use your worm compost. When exactly do you harvest the compost? In approximately two to four months, when the time comes to harvest, put the worm's food at one end of the bin seven to 10 days before collecting, and the worms will follow the food, allowing you to remove the finished worm compost from the worm-free end of the bin. Sure, and then after we harvest, we can relax over a nice cup of worm compost tea. Trust me, you wouldn't like it, but it's very good for the plants. What exactly is worm compost tea? Basically, it's a liquid full of nutrients that you can brew from finished worm castings and water. I've heard that it's considered to be one of the best natural fertilizers on the planet. Yes, but it's so potent it must be diluted with water before you use it. One to two parts worm tea to five parts water is a suggested dosage. Just be sure to stir it vigorously to incorporate plenty of air, then use it right away. Well, it sounds like it's just as beneficial as using actual worm castings themselves. Yes, they both provide essential minerals and nutrients plants need to grow. And when added to the soil, even in small quantities, are rich in nutrients and improve the soil by adding beneficial microbes that feed plants at the root zone and help them fight off disease. Worm castings can even help plants use organic fertilizers more effectively. As you can see, worm composting is a time-tested method for turning our table scraps into a natural organic soil supplement that in turn will produce a rich landscape of flowers, fruits, and vegetables. No doubt about it, Sue, worms are great composters because they not only reduce the waste we throw away, but they help the environment by giving us a rich, non-chemical fertilizer. And the best part about it is anyone can do it and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Worm composting is one of the easiest and most effective ways for people to make a world of difference in the health and well-being of our environment. And I highly recommend it. So why wait? Worm composting is fun, affordable, and just one of the techniques used in the county-wide Smart Gardening Program. So for greener, healthier lawns and gardens, think, think smart and, and get, get with the, the program. program. The Smart Gardening Program, providing simple practices to help you develop healthy and beautiful lawns and gardens. With your involvement, we can make a world of difference. For more information about the Smart Gardening Program, call 1-888-CLEAN-LA or visit the website at www.smartgardening.com. Call or log on today to discover how you can think smart and get with the program.